Uh, welcome everybody, it's Mark and we are continuing our season of chats with T the TM teacher and today I'm really uh, pleased to be talking to Inma who is actually uh, in Brighton, I'm too in Brighton, uh, fellow uh, TM teacher in Brighton and um, so we're going to have a chat with Inma and talk about her meditation path and why she came to meditate. Um, now, Inma is also a wonderfully talented and original tattoo artist, and so maybe we'll get to sort of hear a bit about why she decided to do that and what it's like to be a tattoo artist. I'm quite interested to know that too. <laughs> so, Inma, hello, welcome. <laughs> Thanks for having me. Uh, so, I always ask the first question is like, how did you... Um, how did you come to learn meditation? You know, what was what was your journey? What brought you to learn TM? Like, how did you hear about it? Where were you? What was going on in your life? So that that kind of period when you first learned, what mm. what happened? What happened? Uh, well, as you mentioned, uh, I'm a tattoo artist, and I have been I have been doing that for about twenty years now, and I think it's about five or six years I started meditating. And I think it was a mixture of um, the lifestyle I was living, just living in London for 15 years at the time, having been tattooing for that period of time as well. And it's been always really, really busy. And uh, not my life had a bit of a structure, but it was also a bit chaotic. And uh, I think I was... For a while, I had been looking for a way to slow down a little bit. Um, I was doing yoga at the time, just also just recently I had started. And um, between the yoga and also knowing somebody that was doing TM, um, that kind of sparked the curiosity as well as actually, I got the book here. The very first time I heard about TM was uh, reading this book. And that had been maybe, 10 years before I started meditating. Um, but that was the first the first time that I heard about TM. And when I heard about it again, at about 2015, then, then I thought, let me go and, and, and try it. Because uh, I, I was interested in meditation, but all the different things I had heard from different people, it just sounded a bit complex and not really for me at the time. But um, the explanation I was given about TM from this friend of mine was so, it sounded very simple and quite attractive at the time. Like, um, I just really wanted to, to try it for myself. Uh, I did definitely, it, it was life changing for me. I, yeah. It, can, it you, can you kind of, kind of crystallize, like you say it was life changing. What? What, what, what could you say, what, why, why, why did you say that? I don't know, it was a kind of coming home uh, feeling like, yeah, I kind of, uh, everything that was scattered kind of started having a place and um, yeah, it was just a way to come home twice a day and just the rest of the day didn't really matter so much how it went. I had that feeling of steadiness as security and um better perspective on everything and from there onwards i think i started making uh a lot of decisions around my life that were were right um and that kind of just led me in a completely different direction um than it was five years ago so so that was five years ago in london and then um, you said you were very busy. Uh, did you find it easy to do it twice a day? Yeah, I was, I was very, uh, I was adamant that I was going to do it, uh, give it a good start at least at the beginning. And uh, yeah, it wasn't, it wasn't hard at all. Uh, I remember I was still, yeah, as busy as usual and meeting people after work. And that was a challenging part of finding time in the afternoons. But I will tell everybody, I was like, I started meditating. I need to now just go home or I need to go and uh, find a quiet place before we, we go ahead with 
with our meeting and yeah, that kind of thing. It, it, yeah, it, I didn't find it too too hard to, I mean, to, what is 20 minutes really? Like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and so, so that was five years ago, 2015 roughly. And then, so now you're a TM teacher. So what, 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 why, why did you then sort of step up to training as a teacher and, and when and where did that take place? And uh, I'm not too sure, I'm trying to remember where the idea of becoming a teacher came from. I think, I think as I was doing the city program and I was just like feeling my life kind of changing for the better, um, I just started talking about it a lot, you know, with friends and I suddenly, whenever people will talk about problems and things like that, my, my answer to that was always like, you should meditate and you will see uh, very quickly, you will have the answers and things like that. And then I was like, oh, I should, I should just uh, learn um, to teach and just, just teach them. Yeah, I think that was what sparked the, the desire to, to teach was the idea of going to South America and help younger people, you know, like myself. Because when I arrived in London, I was about 16 and I was a little bit lost. And I just thought, this is such an amazing tool. I wish I had had that earlier in life. Um, maybe I would have, I would have um, gone straight to the point. Um, so yeah, I, I kind of like the idea to teach kids and teenagers. And, and what, what was your, um, what was your experience in Thailand? How long was the course? Uh, the course was four and a half months, I believe. Four and a half or five months. For me, it was a great, great, great opportunity. I had never um, taken such an amount of time just for myself to do something like this. Um, like since I started tattooing at age 16 until until now, my life has been pretty much go, go, go. And to suddenly take five months to really go deep inside, that was an amazing thing for me. Such a great opportunity that I felt I was given and, uh, and that I took. That was the other thing, like, are you, are you ready to take this opportunity and make the most of it? Um, yeah, it was, that was a great, great experience. And did you have you done much teaching like since finishing? Did you go? Did you go back? Did you go to Sydney afterwards? I did. Yeah. I mean, at the time I was pretty much based in Sydney. Uh, I had my working visa in same place, and um, I was in a relationship there, so my life was there. And also uh, the commitment to the Sydney. Um, um, Center, TM Center. Uh, I was already all set to go back and teach there, and there was there was so many people like waiting to be taught, and like I said, not only a couple of other teachers. So, um, so yeah, for the first few months I was there. Um, I was still tattooing part time, and then I was teaching part time, and now we have relocated to England. So here I am, and I haven't I haven't taught here yet. You're doing other good things. I I have I have to say I have a tattoo from from Inma, which I love, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> it's tiny compared to some of the You're amazing tiny. stuff. <laughs> it's a good start, Mark. <laughs> <laughs> I was wondering. Yeah, that's that's the thing that gets me. I was like, oh, because I see some of your like behind you that that color artwork is that that's the kind of art that you do isn't it really that style yeah yeah this is the latest one i've painted but i'm, I'm working on on a series and uh, yeah yeah mainly bright colors i love bright color yeah and yeah, i love that, that that's something that i brought back from australia i love for for bright big birds like that everywhere they're so loud and so beautiful <laughs> um Australia and Thailand, uh, but yeah, I love it. <laughs> we have seagulls here, can't complain either. They're also very loud. Yeah, 
slightly <laughs> different. <laughs> Brilliant. And do you still love doing the, ta the tattooing? Like 20 years, I can't believe you started when you were 16. Do you still really like it? I love it every year more and more because obviously it gets more interesting as, as your artwork progresses and, and people see that and then they want to get your, your artwork. That's, that's what makes it for me really um, to be able to translate my art into skin. And uh, for someone to be so committed to it that they want it in their skin, that's, yeah, that's a great feeling. So, yeah, I love it. Yeah. And um, so I'm curious, like, uh, it sounds like, I mean, because when you did mine, it was very sh it's short, like, I don't know, not even an hour. Um, but I imagine when you're doing those big ones, that's like, for you and for the person, it, it's quite intense, isn't it? Like, yes, it's quite, definitely. quite full on. And, and Oh, I just wonder how you cope with that, or are you just used to it now? Um, well, you, you get used to it, but it's still quite exhausting. So I've over the years, I've never arrived to the point where I'm only tattooing full days uh, three times a week. I cannot do five days a week. So the rest of the time, I'm at home preparing my drawings and my paintings and, and all that. But, yeah, well, after a full day session, you kind of need time to, to recover <laughs> from that, <laughs> mentally and physically. Um, yeah. So yeah, two, three days doing that is more than enough. Um, obviously, now with the meditation, keeping a, a good routine, uh, doing my exercises, all that kind of thing helps helps me keep, continue to be enthusiastic about it. Because if I was working five days a week, I would probably be drain and not very happy so yeah now i found the perfect balance i feel and um like just physically because i mm. i noticed you know you it's it's a fine thing it's like having a fine pen so um i i, I always wondered this like if i drink a lot of coffee for example <laughs> which i don't i used to um you know, know. the hands aren't very steady <laughs> do you do you have to kind of um take care of your physiology so that you're kind of quite physically sort of settled and still mm -hmm. or is it is that not such a big deal no it is it is for me i, I can't speak for anybody else but for me 100 percent um yeah just good habits really um yoga was very important kind of like meet way through my career I started feeling like physically shoulders back wrists was beginning to deteriorate quickly so um doing yoga is very important for me um again the meditation that's help um resting sleeping better yeah, just, just being in good shape this physically I feel like if I wasn't if I wasn't feeling on top shape it would be a lot harder um because physically it's, it is quite demanding so oh i also get massage whenever i can infrared sauna things like that just keeping taking definitely good care of yeah the body and um and um have you been going out on the motorbike recently because i know it's got cold it's got cold <laughs> and gray do you still go out when it's like this last week we had two days two or three days that were so nice uh, so yeah, we went out um, when I for a ride to Devil's Dyke and another day we went to Warden. So not too far because you never know when it's going to start raining again. But yeah, we've been taking little rides and uh, it's been nice, lovely. It's again, that's uh, now that we're in lockdown, it's, it's just such a relief and a sense of freedom to just grab the bike and go. And um, yeah. I look forward to going for joint rides, but do you still have a motorbike? I haven't, I haven't, I haven't bought one yet. I keep, I keep looking at the one that I want, but I haven't okay. committed. Um, I think I, I will soon. We can go out in a gang. <laughs> yeah, 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 that'd be fun. <laughs> a gang. <laughs> you need to get Deborah into it as well. <laughs> yeah, she doesn't. She doesn't really like it. She likes. She prefers to just sit on the back. Cool. Okay, that's really good. So thanks, Emma. That was really um, interesting. 
and thanks for taking the time to, to have a chat.